In a battle between two feet, one is playing the motherhood card. Republican Mary Fallon and Democrat Jerry Askins are competing to become the state's first female governor. In the latest gubernatorial debate, Fallon appeared to target the fact that her 57-year-old opponent is single and has no children. Askins said, I think my experience is one of the things that sets me apart as a candidate for governor. First of all, being a mother, having children, raising a family. Joining me now is Lieutenant Governor Jerry Askins. Thanks very much for being with us. Um, the other thing your opponent said is that being a, a, a mother, having a family, and her experience as a businesswoman makes her better qualified. What do you say? Well, I say there have been wonderful leaders in both uh, Oklahoma and certainly around the country that have not chosen to have children. And my experience as a member of the, uh, as a judge for eight years, 12 years in the legislature and as lieutenant governor, I think really equips me for the governing side of the position of governor. I, I understand, and I didn't see the debate itself, but I understand there was a gasp in the audience when she said what she said. Were you surprised that she, uh, to put it in these terms, played the motherhood card? Oh, I, I have had that experience before when I've run for office. Really? Oklahoma. Well, when I ran for lieutenant governor, it's just usually been quieter when it's been brought up. It's the first time it's been brought up in a debate. So I think there was some surprise from the audience that it was highlighted at the beginning of her statement of experience. Uh, do you worry about it at all? Do you think, though, that there are uh, a lot of potentially uh, moms out there who see your opponent as someone who th is very relatable? Uh, and somebody who is outside of the mainstream of government. As you said, you know, you've been the head of a state agency, you've been a legislator, you're now lieutenant governor. Does that hurt you? I don't really think so. She's been four years in Congress and 12 years as lieutenant governor and also served as state representative in Oklahoma. So uh, I, don't, I don't think she's outside the mainstream of government, but I do think that there are hundreds of women in Oklahoma that would love to have children that either biologically could not have them or have not yet reached the point in their life where they're going to have children. And I, it's those women that I've heard are pretty offended by the statement. Jerry Askins, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Back with us now, former Republican Congresswoman from New York, Susan Molinari. Julie Roginski is a Democratic strategist. Uh, Susan, I can't remember hearing anything quite like that in a debate before, sort of suggesting that you're more qualified if you are a wife and mother. What do you make of that? Well, you know, let me just say from the outset, I know Mary Fallon. I like Mary Fallon. I think she's going to win, and I think she's going to be a great governor. That being said, um, and, and I also think, you know, we all bring our portfolios, you know, in terms of who we are to the table when, when we campaign and when we ask people to trust us, at, you know, making decisions over themselves and their families. That being said, you know, somebody else's family history um, should not be a disqualifier for public office. Um, I think there's a, been a lot of great women leaders and men leaders, male leaders too. I'll let them the, get some compliments in here too, who have not been married, who didn't have families, but who could understand the stresses, the problems, and have the right priorities for people who do have families. You know, Julie, I guess on the other side, if, if turnabout is fair play, you could say, you know, she's recently remarried or she remarried, she has six kids their combined family. Maybe she's too busy to be governor. I, I don't know. I It just seems yeah, very strange. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize being single was a crime and not having children was suddenly a crime. You're lesser than somebody who, who, who has kids. I mean, I'm somebody who obviously does not have kids and is not married. And I joined, I joined the Democratic candidate in saying, look, these are people, me included, who one day hope to get married, but that has nothing whatsoever to do with your job and what you're performing as your job. I mean... Now, maybe it was in phraseology. Would it have been okay if she said, look, Here's the experience I have by having a family that my opponent won't know about. She doesn't know what it is. Well, I no, wouldn't say still that. I mean, it's still offensive. I mean, low blow. What does being governor have to do with having a family? It doesn't. I think I can relate to other people's families and their hardships and putting kids through college without being married and having a family of my own. I certainly think any woman can, and I certainly think any man can who's a good public official. So it was just offensive. It's a low blow dig. And quite frankly, I don't know what the subliminal message in that debate was, but it was just completely unacceptable. Acceptable. All right, Julie, Susan, thanks to both Thank of you. you. Thank you. It's the story that has people talking today. The girl